Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today and I thought for today's video we could answer a question that I actually don't get very often, but I did get it this morning and that is, what does it feel like to not have an anus anymore? Yeah, we are starting this video off strong, aren't we? But yeah, I actually don't get a ton of questions on what does it feel like, what does it look like years down the line from having this surgery. The surgery that we're talking about is proctocolectomy surgery. It means the removal of the rectum and the anus and sometimes the colon. For my case, the proctocolectomy is what I got. So colectomy, colon removal too. And if you are not a patient and you are just here because you are curious about what the heck I'm talking about, I have Crohn's disease. It's an autoimmune illness, mainly of the GI tract, and it basically caused a lot of scar tissue and damage to my rectum and anal area. So we got that shit out. When a patient is thinking about this surgery though, I think the focus is really on what is recovery going to be like? It is a difficult surgery to have. I'm not going to, you know, paint over that fact. It really is a difficult recovery because of the location of it. It is between your cheeks, and that is a very highly mobile spot that you don't realize is highly mobile. Mobile? Why did I say it like that? Can't I just say mobile? Mm, we're being fancy today, apparently. Uh, so, yes, it is a very painful area, a very sensitive area to get surgery done. But I think that it's very useful information to know what it's going to be like a few years from now when you are recovered and you have healed from this surgery. And for those of you who do not and will not have any experience with this, you might just be interested in what it's like. So I definitely recommend sticking around. At this point in time, I am about three years, a little over three years out from my proctocolectomy surgery, meaning that I am well healed at this point. It did take quite some time for me to heal. It took about a year to fully get that thing to heal, but it did heal. And sitting here right now on the thing that was removed, <laughs> I'm on a chair, if you didn't know, um, I feel completely different, but at the same time, completely normal. In my case, when it comes to what it looks like and feels like, it's pretty normal. And I know you're probably thinking, okay, you literally had a hole removed from your bottom. There's no way that that can look like normal, you know? But I can share with you that I get a Brazilian wax done every month and I've seen two different people now to get this done, and um, I've worn them the first time. I'm like, you know, when you go in there and you, you're doing your thing and you're waxing, you might notice something missing. I'm just throwing it out there. And my ostomy bag, when they're doing the front, kind of pokes out sometimes from my shirt. So, so they're aware, I make them aware but they have both told me I wouldn't have necessarily realized if you hadn't told me that the anus is missing. Now, not everybody with my disease gets their anus removed, even if they're getting their colon taken out or their rectum. Some people will leave what's called a rectal stump and they kind of leave that little tail of it and the anus in place. So from the outside, it looks like business as usual, but it, it's not. With me, however, I had very, very severe Crohn's disease down there. Um, I could take a mirror between my legs and see Crohn's and just see the effect that it had. So um, what, what I had going on was not the prettiest looking thing, at least in terms of anuses. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. It was <laughs> knotted and uh, like, lumpy. I, I really don't know how else to describe it. This is a very weird thing for me to be talking about right now. It didn't look normal. Um, it looked like if you've ever seen um, like colonoscopies and stuff of people with Crohn's disease and you see the inside of their intestines where there is active Crohn's, that's what it looked like down there. Yeah. I, I don't know. Because I am not a surgeon. I am not an expert with this surgery. 
All I can tell you is my experience and the little bit of knowledge that I have revolving around this surgery. My understanding is that the muscle, so the sphincter for the anus, was totally removed. And it almost looks like they went around the edge of where the opening was and they closed it like a drawstring. So when my Brazilian wax lady goes up there, it's like, it looks nearly completely how a healthy person would look, but the hole's gone. Like, the, there, there is no opening. I mean, it looks, it looks good. And that's actually one of the few memories I have of the day I had surgery afterwards. The nurse had to check my skin and check my bandages on my bottom, and she turned me over and she goes, mm, girl. You look good. I can't even tell you how much I appreciated that comment because that's a huge fear when it comes to this surgery is, is it gonna look all right? Is it gonna be okay? Um, things can go wrong. Things cannot heal properly. It's a risk that you take when it comes to this surgery and sometimes you need to go back for further surgeries and choose other options to get it to close. Thank goodness. Mine closed. Anyways, so yeah, that is what mine looks like. It looks just like the hole's missing. Um, the only difference I think that mine may have compared to other people that get this surgery is that I also had a fistula tract and I had no idea that I had it. Um, I had symptoms my whole time with Crohn's disease but I just didn't realize and nobody else did. And I always say it's like your body is trying to take the path of least resistance. So when I had this scarred up anus that I had a lot of trouble going to the bathroom through, my rectum said, okay, let's find another way out. And it developed a little like tunnel, a little pathway from my rectum to my tailbone, pretty close to my tailbone. And so when they were taking everything out during the surgery, they saw the old healed fistula tract and it went to my tailbone. So I have a little scar that goes just above where the hole used to be up to my tailbone. And that's kind of like a line. That healed so easy that that healed in weeks um, just because of the area, it was a little bit higher up. When you're dealing with the lower area where the actual hole was, it's a dark spot. It is, you know, it's not getting a lot of airflow. Um, it's in between skin folds. It's just a really rough place to heal. So before my surgery, I did so much research on, okay, how, how to best get wounds to heal? And you know, what kind of diet should I be having afterwards? Um, what kind of supplements should I be taking? I did it all and I still had trouble with it, but I, I eventually did get it to heal. And if anybody ever wants me to review what products, what actual products I use to um, do my dressings that really seem to help with it, I can certainly do that. I think I've talked about it probably in some video before, but yeah, that's what it looks like. And I'll tell you, 100%, I have absolutely <laughs> sent pictures on Instagram of it to people, uh, you know, people who genuinely have a disease that requires them to get this surgery that are curious. Um, so I, I don't know, my, my Tushkins could be on some interesting websites, you know, as long as you're sharing the cut with me, I don't care. But <laughs> yeah. So that is what it looks like, but what does it feel like? I've, I've talked about my like phantom rectum feeling where it feels like I have to go to the bathroom, but I haven't really described what the feeling is to not have an anus anymore. And like I said before, it's completely different, but it's like also completely normal. And I say that because I used to experience a lot of pain revolving around the anus because it was so diseased and I really hope you guys are comfortable with me saying that word because <laughs> I've said enough in this video already. Um, it was very diseased and trying to go to the bathroom, trying to pass mucus once I got my ostomy, um, it, it made it just a rough experience. So once I had the surgery and everything healed up, I realized, okay, that pain's gone because the, the 
the area that was diseased is now gone. It sort of made me feel normal. And I know I mentioned that they took out the sphincter muscle, so there is no muscle for me to do anything down there, but at the same time, I think that my pelvic floor muscles must be compensating for that missing muscle <laughs> because this is gonna sound bizarre. You know how you can clench? <laughs> I can uh, sort of do a weak version of that. I kind of like get halfway there, um, but obviously th there's nothing to clench down there. So I'm not actually doing it but it doesn't feel as weird or different as I expected prior to surgery. I thought it was just gonna be like this whole numb area and uh, like it would be like missing a limb or something. I don't know what I expected really, but it's not like that. I still have nerve endings down there. It's still a sensitive area. It's just missing a major feature. I feel truly lucky that I was able to get this surgery and I probably would have done it sooner had I known how it would have gone. But at the same time, you know, life works out the way it does. The timing just worked out. But I feel lucky in the way that I did it where I got my ostomy. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it is my small intestine coming out of my stomach just like an inch or so, and I wear a bag, and that is how I go to the bathroom. My GI system is basically normal, except for missing the colon, rectum, and anus. I just, I cut out the lower part of it, and I wear a plastic bag, an adhesive plastic bag on my stomach 100% of the time, and that's how I go to the bathroom now. But I'm glad that I got that done at the age of 16. Um, what was that, 2000 and nine, I believe. I'm glad I got that done then, given myself a lot of time to adjust to, you know, knowing it was probably likely that I would have my ostomy for the rest of my life and kind of working up towards the courage to make it official. Because until I had the proctocolectomy surgery, the anus removal, technically I could have gotten rid of my ostomy. I could have gotten reversed. Would I have lasted long reversed? No, <laughs> I would not have. But it was a possibility, not really. But it, it was physically, I guess, sort of, you know, I had the pieces and the parts to do it. Now I don't. Now it's permanent. There's no going back. I don't regret it one single bit because I know how bad that whole area was damn. I mean, I, I was so sick and so in pain just because of that small area that it just got to the point uh, in 2019 where I was like, screw it, like, let's get this baby out. When I saw the colorectal surgeon for the first time, um, I said, listen, I think it's time. I think it's time I got to get this out. And he said, hey, well, hold on. Let's, let's go take a look at it first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. And... Um, I wound up getting a colonoscopy, but in the OR rather than just like a GI suite because they couldn't even get into my colon. Um, my rectum was so strictured and small, nothing would fit through. They tried pediatric like endoscopes and couldn't get through. So <laughs> they did it in the OR. They tried to force their way in there and I woke up from that to uh, the surgeon saying, yep. Yeah, let's let's do it. So I got my confirmation that things were not good, um, but very thankful that three plus years later, it looks good, it feels good, it's a little bit different, but not nearly as bad as I thought it would be, and uh, don't regret it one bit. So I, I like talking about it online, obviously, because uh, A, there's a lot of patients that just I, I, this is the position I was in before surgery. I was asking my friends and stuff that advocate online, um, if you know Double Bag in It, Danielle and Joe, they were probably the first people that I asked <laughs> about it. We were at a conference, I think it was in Vegas, and I said, Danielle, what is it like? <laughs> because I think I'm heading there. And uh, it wasn't too much later that I wound up getting the surgery, but I was in that position. So 
people want to know about it. And then there are people out there that have no idea that this is even a possibility, that you can live without an anus. Like, it's just a wild concept to them. And um, it's one of Zach's favorite things to tell people about me. I'm like, listen, start with the ostomy. Start with the ostomy first. That's different enough, like a new concept for people. And then we'll, we'll just sneak in there that I don't have a butt. I have one, but it's, you know, a non-functional one. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Okay, I wanted to share that because I, at 4 a.m. when I woke up today, I messaged somebody who was asking about what it felt like. And I was like, you know what? Let's talk about what it's like years down the line, what it actually feels like sitting here in a chair. Like, feels like I can clench, but not all the way. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. And that's, that's what I wanted. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I want you guys to know that my last video where I talked about the financial stuff with uh, chronic illness and being a patient, I'm so thrilled to start working on that. So give me some time to gather my thoughts. I'm going to talk to Zach too, because he works in finance if you didn't know. So I think he'll be able to help me as well. And Yes, please subscribe. Please like the video if you like the video. Um, follow me over on Instagram and I will see you guys soon. Bye guys.